We are at the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources Marine Research Center on James Island, and I'm speaking with Kim Counts Morganello, who is a water resources agent for Clemson Extension. Kim, there are a lot of people involved in a program that's going on here today, so tell us what the name of this program is and who all is making it happen. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we are part of the From Seeds to Shoreline project. It's led by South Carolina Sea Grant Consortium in partnership with the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources and Clemson Extension. And what's the purpose of it? We provide students an opportunity to learn about the importance of the salt marsh through actively engaging in a salt marsh restoration. And to date, it's the only one of its kind in the state of South Carolina. Why do we need salt marsh restoration? We're very fortunate in South Carolina in that we have nearly 350,000 acres of salt marsh. And what I think sometimes we take for granted is that the salt marsh is one of the most biologically productive ecosystems on Earth, right behind the rainforest. Right behind the rainforest? Yes, ma'am. Really? We are full of life here in the salt marsh. The kids who came down today, did they have an opportunity to try to see what was out there? Absolutely. So we give the students an opportunity. They do scientific transects where they go into the low marsh and the high marsh and um, see what sort of differences they can find between the two areas. Um, we also do a scavenger hunt where we basically, we really just want to give the kids an opportunity to get their hands and their feet muddy and see what kind of critters they can find in the salt marsh. You have these little trays and you have one of them fixed as if Spartana grass were already established and the other without it. And you show how pollutants move. Uh -huh. So tie that into what's actually happening here, what the students are doing. Absolutely. So one of the activities that we do with the students is we want to make sure that they understand that just like a water filter at their home, how that might filter the water for them, um, our salt marsh is going to filter the water for us. So all that stormwater runoff that's ending up in our salt marsh, um, the salt marsh has the ability to remove pollutants and sediment from the water that eventually is going to find its way to the ocean. And when you gave them the opportunity of which one would you rather go swimming in, there was no hesitation at all. These, this, you said that the salt marsh actually um, cooperates with the school calendar and that that's a part of the reason this program works so good. So tell me how that all ties together. Absolutely. So um, in the salt marsh, as you know, Amanda, our dominant plant is Spartina alterniflora. And uh, it is really our seasonal color here in the low country. In the summertime, you almost have to have sunglasses to look at it. It's just that vibrant green. Um, during the fall, it's a cornucopia of colors, um, oranges, yellows, reds. Winter, it gets really drab, it dies back. And in the springtime, which is where we are, um, we get a mixture of green and brown, um, new growth and old growth. And what happens is whenever our students are coming back from the, their summer vacation, they are, uh, our Spartina is starting to seed out. And so our students can do a couple activities with their teachers in the classroom and then come out around October, they head out into the salt marsh and they collect seeds. They actually collect the seeds themselves? Yes, ma'am. And then do they take them back to their school and grow them out? They take them back to their school, but before they grow them out, they replicate what's happening in nature in the oh. wintertime. They store them in water in a refrigerator in a cool environment. Uh -huh. Just like we'd have on the beach. Yep. Yeah. We tell everybody, take a break, um, you know, go have your, yeah. your vacation, your winter vacation. And then when they come back from the holidays, they're going to take those seeds out and they're going to germinate them. And the way that they germinate them is basically by putting them on a sunny um, windowsill. And once they germinate, then the kids cultivate them, grow them up, and then they come to today where we're actually planting them. I guess if you're going to send children out in the marsh to collect seeds and do all this kind of stuff and plant them and grow them, you must give the teachers some education ahead of time. That's right, Amanda. We do a series of teacher workshops in the summertime. Um, our partner, South Carolina Sea Grant Consortium, SCDNR, and Clemson Extension. We offer our teachers an opportunity to um, really become empowered and really learn um, about the salt marsh and about the process that goes into uh, salt marsh restoration. And even our returning teachers have the opportunity to come to a returning uh, teacher workshop, one that's geared towards somebody who's actually done a lot of the work. I was impressed that when it was actually time to put the plants in the ground, we took hula hoops out there Not so good. that we knew where we were working, we wouldn't tromp over somebody else's. And, and you really went through the whole process of how to put the little plant in the ground. Right. And, um, and, and talk about why it's so important to get it done just right. And I think, exactly, that's a very good uh, point in that one of the things that's interesting about this project is our students and our teachers and our staff really had to figure out how to do this. 
we didn't have a you know a magic bullet that told us how to how to grow and to plant Spartina. So it's something that we fine tuned over the years, and um, we really the students we tell them if they can plant in the pluff mud, they can plant anywhere. <laughs> and most of them have never even planted a plant before, or a lot of them. And one of the things that happens a couple of years before you actually come and put these plants in is there's another project going on that tries to create the proper habitat. That's right. It's the SCDNR. SCORE program, which stands for South Carolina Oyster Reef Enhancement Program. And basically, um, the way our oysters reproduce is uh, they produce a free-floating um, larval form mm -hmm. called spat that floats into the water column. And that spat needs oyster shell to fall out on and grow more oysters. So whenever people have oyster roasts, which of course we're known for um, in the low country, they can recycle their oyster shells, get them to DNR, and DNR will plant them out into the water. So the oysters, as the water comes in, um, cleanse the water, they filter the water, and then behind these oyster reefs, they deposit that organic matter. And then you come in, plant the Spartina grass, and as things pollutants come off the shoreline, um, they are captured and held in the soil, and the Spartina cleanses the water of those. Absolutely. The Spartina is going to act like a filter. It's going to help um, uptake you know, excess nutrients and pollutants like bacteria, um, trapped sediment, etc. So between the Spartina and the Oyster Reef, um, we're really doing a good thing. Well, I'm looking forward to having many, many wonderful uh -huh. seafood meals that come from the wonderful water, clean waters of South Carolina. Thank Absolutely. you for what y'all are doing here. And if people want to know more about the program, what's the best way to find out about it? www.scgrant.org. Seagrant.org. Yes, ma'am. Thanks so much for letting me come and get my hands dirty Thank in that you, wonderful Amanda. fluff mud. Thank you for joining us.